This is our 10.8 kilowatts of solar, which powers our entire off-grid home. We chose to build an off-grid system as we want to be self-sufficient. It's hard to believe, but it would be over $500,000 to bring power to our cabin, as we're very remote and our off-grid system costs a fraction of that. What does it power? Heat pumps, yes, two of them. Well pump for shower, dishes, and gardening, coffee machines, laundry, fridge, deep freezer, and other household appliances. In this video, we are going to show you the decision-making behind it all, from trenching the electrical lines to installing the solar array and our battery house. We've now been using this system for over a year and want to give you a full review on how it works through all four seasons in Canada. And if you're new here, we're Jazz and Crystal, and over the past three years, we've transformed this abandoned cabin into our home. In a few months, we begin building a home from scratch in Baja, Mexico. Make sure you subscribe to come with us on our next adventure. But before we could really dig into this project, pun intended, we needed a place to store our batteries and electrical system, as it's illegal here in Canada to have the system within your primary residence. We waited so long for this workshop to be able to start building our system, and this milestone meant so much. I can't believe it! Gosh, so well by this the is Mennonite. So surreal. Are you crying? We have a garage. Can you believe that? No, I can't believe that. Hey, Porter, how are you? Guess what? The garage is here. Step one was to plan where everything was going to go. We drew several handmade maps of our land before the final decision. Ten long minutes later. At least. <laughs> this is our map. You ready to follow it? We determined the route of the electrical trench considered factors such as distance, depth, terrain, and obstacles. Trying to use the same trench twice was hugely beneficial. We then got the necessary equipment and materials for trenching. Safety marking flags, spray paint, measuring tape, electrical caution tape, glue, and conduit, including an excavator. As in Canada, we have to be at least three feet down. We wanted to have power in all three buildings on our property, so we are trenching 800 feet around the land. This yeah. seems like a lot of laps. Well, it is, because well, we have to go from, from there, there to there, there to there, there to there, there to there, to there to there, yeah, and there, there to, to there, there to and there, there to there. <laughs> you catch it? You got it? Yikes! By the way, this is Porter. He's our quarry guy, master excavator operator, and a helping hand when we needed it. But most importantly, a good friend now. <laughs> to trench from the solar to the workshop, the workshop to the cabin, and then the workshop to the greenhouse with one blank line to the workshop. We, well, I can't say we, Porter, trenched all the way from the back of this hickory barn to the solar field. It's entirely trenched and ready for the conduit. All that planning we did with Porter that you saw, so many different electrical lines and even some blank ones for the future. Just gonna future proof, you never know what could happen down the road. Made sure the trench is wide enough to accommodate the electrical conduit or cables and deep enough to meet the local code requirements, typically at least 18 to 24 inches deep for residential electrical lines. Next, we installed conduit. Our ground is very rocky, therefore we wanted to add conduit for protection for the cables. But also, if we ever want to size up, we have the ability to fish wire through the conduit. We also laid a blank in case we want to size up our system or install power in a future building. We then secured the conduit in place using the correct glue inside and outside of the conduit. How many feet are we doing, Porter? 920 feet. Ready to go, everyone? Here okay. we go. And Let's we're starting at... <laughs> Oh, only four o'clock in the point. afternoon. Everyone take a big guess what you uh, need right here. You need a great big smile. Aww. <laughs> and that's why Porter loves working with us. <laughs> when laying it, we had the conduit come out from the ground and put an expansion joint on top. We didn't glue it as we still need to pull the wires through, but we will do that later in this video. And of course, weather played a big factor. As our trench filled up with water, very quickly. But hey, we made the best of it. <laughs> How do you reckon we're getting this water out of here? Porter? Just gonna drain it into the woods. Yeah, with the bucket? Yeah. Keep Go team. Go team. Get my river. 
my river. Now that we have the conduit in, we removed any big rocks that could end up back in the trench. We then backfilled the trench with sand as an extra precaution due to our rocky land. We compacted it gently as we went to prevent settling. Lastly, we laid electrical caution tape about one foot from the surface and finished backfilling. After a ton of hard work, we are ready to install the solar array. Chapter two, the solar array. Our electrician has just arrived. We worked with an electrician to figure out exactly how much solar we would need on the darkest days of our Canadian winters. During the winter months, at times, we get less than nine hours of daylight each day. Oh my gosh, look at that. White out conditions, people. This is something to consider. You have options when installing solar panels. The most popular ways to install them are roof mounts, ground mounts, solar tracking systems, or a pole mount. Installing solar panels on your roof is one of the most common and space efficient options. South facing roofs typically receive the most sunlight throughout the day, making them ideal for solar panel placement. If your roof isn't suitable for solar panels, ground mounted solar panels can be an alternative. This involves placing the panels on a racking system installed on the ground. Keep in mind, you do need to clear a large area, typically 10 by 40, with minimal shading. In addition, since ground mounts are also close to the ground, if you are in a snowy climate, the snow will pile up below and quickly reach the panels. Another option is elevating your solar array using the Fast Track TPM12 pole mount system. These come in a variety of sizes, two, three, four, six, or 12 panels. They are a bit more expensive than the above options, but ideal for winter or concerns of shading. In regions with varying sunlight angles throughout the year, such as Canada, solar tracking systems can enhance energy production by automatically adjusting the panel's angle to track the sun's movement. While more expensive than fixed systems, trackers can significantly increase energy output, especially during the winter months when the sun is lower in the sky. We chose to do a pole mount system for many reasons. We are surrounded by trees and need our solar array to be higher up. We are also fully off grid. We need a lot more solar than our cabin's roof can hold. Our ground is super rocky and wet and trying to put 10 sono tubes or screw piles in the ground for a ground mount is very difficult. Trust me, we tried. A little bit of a spooky start. Hitting rocks already on the first screw pile. Might not be a good sign. Well, that is a small car. This terrain is far too rocky for these screw piles. We had a feeling this could happen. We knew it was a possibility. But we can still maybe do the post, it just really depends. Yep, you can see why we installed the poles. That's a big rock. That's a big rock. If you've been traveling and you haven't used eSIMs yet, you are missing out. eSIMs have changed the game for travelers. Over the last few years, we've been to many different countries from the Bahamas to Colombia, Mexico, to different places in Europe. And more recently to Indianapolis, Jasmine surprised me with a trip to the United States. And the night before, I didn't need to call my provider or worry about having service in the States. I just simply topped up my United States eSIM. And when I landed the next morning, I had service service immediately. So you're able to stay connected, use all of your apps, make calls and text without having to think about it anymore. It's really so easy using Airlo. They have eSIMs in over 200 different countries and regions, and it just makes being connected more affordable and more convenient than ever before. Let's say you're going to Europe next summer, you can get a regional eSIM that's gonna cover you across multiple countries. So when you cross borders, you don't need to think about staying connected. We all know data roaming can get expensive, and Finding Wi-Fi can be challenging. eSIMs are the most convenient way these days. And you don't need to physically remove your SIM card. It is 100% digital. And if you can't tell, I'm super passionate about this because I am a long time traveler and having this 10 years ago would have completely blown my mind. So if you wanna give it a shot, I highly recommend you do. At least start by downloading the app and getting familiar with all the different places and different plans that you can have. Check out Airlo by clicking on the link in the description and use code VANWIVE3 for your first purchase. Due to the angle of our panels on our mount, the snow will fall right off itself. And since they are six feet off the ground, the snow never piles so high that it blocks the panels. Lastly, you can manually tilt the solar array based on the season. Overall, the optimal placement of solar panels in Canada will depend on factors such as roof orientation, shading, and tilt angle. I actually have goosebumps. <laughs> you see them? Yeah. Like I have goosebumps just thinking about when the next 12 panels go down. Holy moly. 
This is Adam, our electrician and also our friend. He was a pivotal person in every step making this off-grid system what it is today. Consulting with a professional solar installer can help you assess your property's solar potential and determine the best placement for maximizing energy production year-round. This is the sheet an electrician made for us which showed us how much solar we would need. Now that we have decided on a pole mount, we found the perfect location. In the Northern Hemisphere, the general rule for solar placement is is the solar panel should face true south. So we landed with this area for the solar array. It was far enough back from the trees on the other side that they wouldn't shade the panels. Oh my goodness! Now that's how you do it! <laughs> we had to clear a 15 by 40 area. We did this with our handy dandy chainsaw and we rented an excavator. We then had to fill the ground as it's very soft and we needed to make it level with the yard. Hashtag Porter, if you know, you know. We first dug a hole that was 11 to 13 feet deep with an excavator, tracked down a 30 inch wide sono tube at a construction store and brought the tube over the fun way. Added two to four inch gravel and then three quarter inch gravel. Put the sono tube in and leveled the top and the sides. We added more rocks and then backfilled the hole. And it was finally time to install the Schedule 80 pipe. Let's see if it works. I think you got it. Here we go. We're going in. We used the excavator to lift and insert the pole into the sono tube and hold it perfectly level. Just as soon as things were going right and they're going wrong again, the concrete truck got here and immediately said that there's four feet of water in the sono tube. Yeah. I forgot to tell you, we had a lot of issues with these sono tubes. Oh my goodness, it's like a waterfall. Might have found a spring. I, th I knew today was gonna be something, but I did not think it was gonna go like this. Holy smokes. If you'd like to see how the whole story unfolds in detail, check out our playlist with all of our off-grid solar power install videos. Okay, where were we? Oh yeah, here. We filled the tube with concrete, we vibrated it and carefully inserted the pole and leveled it. We then built a DIY bracing system to hold the pole in place. This is our TPM-12, but first you have to build it. This is the Fast Track Universal Top of Pole Mounts TPM-12, which fits 12, 60 or 72 cell solar modules in a rigid corrosion resistant aluminum galvanized steel frame. The collar slides over eight inches of the Schedule 80 pipe and it has adjustable tilt angles. It's easy assembly and ideal for off-grid or grid tie systems. We attached a collar around the Schedule 80 pipe. Yep, we can't even lift it. Ooh. And that's all I can get it! Assembled the TPM-12 mounting rails. We attached the end clamps to the mounting rails at the end of each solar panel array. These clamps will hold the solar panels in place along the rails. Make sure they're correctly spaced or you have to do it all over again. We then set the winter angle and mounted the solar panels. We all carefully lifted each solar panel onto the mounting rails and positioned them between the end clamps. We then secured the panels in place by tightening the clamps to a specific torque and held them firmly against the rails. Once the solar panels are securely mounted, route the solar panel wiring along the mounting rails or through the designated channels to keep them organized. We wired ours in series and parallel, which doubles our amps and volts, giving us 10.8 kilowatts of solar. What a view. I think we'll just stay here for a while, hey? Holy, I can't believe we're at this stage. <laughs> I'm in awe. In a couple weeks, though, we hooked up, wires run, batteries connected. Big moves. Power, baby! With the solar done, it's time for the electrical system. In Canada, it is illegal to have your batteries in your main dwelling. Therefore, we are putting our batteries in our workshop. We chose the workshop as it helps us save on heating with another building as we want to have the workshop heated anyways. Lithium batteries have specific temperature ranges at which they prefer to be stored to maintain optimal performance and prolong their lifespan. Ideally, lithium batteries should be stored at room temperature. This temperature range is optimal for maintaining battery capacity 
capacity and overall performance. First step was to build a battery house. The system we are installing is 28,000 amp hours, so we needed to build a big space for all the off-grid equipment, but also to keep the system enclosed and to keep anyone that's passing by in the area safe. We started by framing the walls and the floor at a two by fours. We added extra insulation on the floor, even spray foamed the gaps, put up half inch plywood on the walls and hung a door and put a lock on it. Ta-da, battery room. Now it was time to map out our system on the walls. Firstly, a huge thank you to Battleborn Batteries for setting us up with this massive system. We went with 24 Battleborn batteries, 100 amp hours each wired in parallel and series to double our voltage and amps giving us 28,000 amp hours. Two 5,000 watt 48 volt quattro inverter chargers to give us 10 kilowatts of 120 and 240 power. Two VE panels as they make for an easy and simpler installation connecting in one location all of the AC and the DC cables. One BMV 712, two Victron smart dongles, two current surge limiters, two Victron MPPT solar charge controllers, two Victron Lynx distributors, two Victron 1P65 chargers, and four battery balancers. But let's bring you back to when the installation happened and we remember what it meant for us to get here. For 598 days, we've been living without a reliable power source at our cabin in the woods. We constantly run out of power, leaving us in the dark. We just live all grid and our battery system died. In, in the middle of dinner. Everything we've done has led us to this very moment of getting power at our cabin. We began making our custom battery wires, attach the lugs to the wire with this fancy tool and some heat shrink. Each wire has to be the same distance even if the battery is closer to the links. Supervisors were having a heyday. While we made the wire connections, we were also charging our batteries. We did this by using the Victron Lithium Battery Charger. So using Battleborn's batteries, it is important to have them all charged to the same voltage of 14.6 volts. This is because they have smart technology built inside of them and it helps keep them equal when when connecting all 24 batteries. We connected a kill switch on each battery bank. We started connecting our negative cables from the batteries to the links and then the positives. Added the correct fuse size in each spot. Connected the links to the VE panels and the inverters. We dug a hole in the ground for a grounding plate. Do a little dance and connected all the wires that we trenched to the panel boxes, which were then connected to the off-grid system. We programmed the Victron components with Battleborn batteries, and now it's time to try out the system. There we go. Oh! oh. All right, we're gonna see if power goes on in the cabin. Oh my goodness. I can't believe this. It does not feel real at all. Massive bed lights. So if you hit that, this will tell you it's working. Whoa! It's oh. running off the batteries! Are you serious? I'm serious! You have power. You have That's power! Crazy. Right, you have power. We have you power. Hit the switch on the wall there beside you. Yeah. There you go. Whoa! Right. How's that feel? I don't have words. Got power, Porter. Got power. All that hard work coming to life. Yeah. It's amazing that you showed up today too because you've been here for like the trenching, Everything. every single thing, Everything. and now you you came with the lights. <laughs> no, it's just it is crazy. It's been yeah. such a process. It's so amazing that you know, yeah, such we have it. It is emotional. it is emotional. I don't even know how to feel. It's kind of yeah. crazy. Yeah. It took 603 days from when we moved into this abandoned cabin to have a reliable power system. It was literally years of hard work and dedication to make it happen. After living with our off-grid system for over a year in all four seasons in Canada, we can 100% say the system we chose fits our needs perfectly. We enjoy our energy independence and sustainability year round. It is evident that off-grid power solutions in Canada can be highly effective and reliable with proper planning, equipment solutions, collection and maintenance. Our system is designed to handle increased challenges such as snow accumulations by choosing a pole mount array, optimizing panel location and angles. Due to the fact that we have sized our system properly for the winter months when sunlight is limited and temperatures drop, we are laughing in the summer. We'd have to say this is a lot better than paying 500k and a utility bill every month. 
In fact, we will save about 24,000 Canadian dollars in power bills over the next 10 years. After a hurricane plunges the area into darkness, having an off-grid system offers security and self-sufficiency. Our solar panels and battery backups keep essential appliances and communication running. We are very happy with our decision and all of the hard work, blood, sweat, and tears we put into our system. And we are so happy to share with you our yearly review and all of the knowledge we've learned along the way. Woo, 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 woo.